Since Rugby Australia sacked Israel Folau for daring to express his devout Christian faith online, we have seen a concerted effort to protect religious freedoms and belief. While Folau did effectively win his case, Prime Minister Scott Morrison, a self-proclaimed Christian, claims he wants to prevent this kind of situation from ever happening again. He soon set about drafting new religious protection law, but initially a number of sectors pushed back, including religious lobby groups. They were unhappy with a number of issues within the bill, saying they would rather no bill at all than a flawed one. From the Sydney Morning Herald, quote, The groups, which include the Catholic Archdiocese of Sydney, the Anglican Diocese of Sydney, the, the Executive, Executive Council, Council of, of Australian, Australian Jewry, the Australian National Imams Council, and the Greek Orthodox Church in Australia, say the bill in its current form will diminish the religious freedom of faith groups in Australia. The intervention, which could delay the bill's introduction to Parliament until next year, follows a series of setbacks for the Morrison government in the second last sitting week of 2019. The government released a draft bill in August, resulting in an avalanche of criticism from diverse religious groups who say the current version does not go far enough. One of the specific criticisms from churches has been the definition of a religious body, as these are given special protections over their ability to hire and fire staff on the basis of religious belief. Churches, religious schools and registered charities all qualify as religious bodies, but not groups that engage primarily in commercial activities. In response to church concerns, Mr Porter last week announced he would update the bill to include religious hospitals and aged care homes as religious bodies. He described this as probably the most significant change to his draft bill." End quote. The Prime Minister took the criticisms, went back to the drawing board and quickly amended the bill under the advisement of these religious groups. Changes include an expansion of the definition of a religious body and a redefining of the term vilify to incite hatred or violence. There are obviously major issues with this law and it is a little bit too close to big tech social media terms and conditions for comfort. After all, what other emotions would the Prime Minister like us to stop inciting? And since when was discrimination a bad thing? If Australia was still a homogenous, white, Christian nation, as the founders explicitly intended, this would not be a discussion. That said, you can often judge the value of an action by the criticisms levelled at it, and this case appears no exception. Former Olympic gold medalist Ian Thorpe, former women's basketballer Lauren Jackson, and anti-straight bigot author Benjamin Law decided to air their criticism in a Facebook video ad for Equality Australia. It is a work of cringe and dishonesty only the LGPT lobby, desperate to remain in power and relevance in a world fast moving back to God and tradition, could produce. I just want to take a quick moment to ask that you please come and subscribe to my channel over at BitChute. YouTube are censoring honest voices and suppressing all independent content creators that they allow to remain. Soon, they will almost certainly remove us all anyway because the truth threatens the parasitic establishment controlling the world right now. It is super important that you follow creators elsewhere and I post regular BitChute exclusives so if you like my content and want to see it all, you will need to subscribe there and click the bell. An added bonus is that notifications actually work over there too. Thank you so much for your support. Now back to the video. The video opens with a word from Ian Thorpe because Australians enjoy sport and Equality Australia wants you to respect the message based on idol worship rather than reasonable argument. It then takes a number of statements from different people all demanding the same thing. For the law to remove your right to speak your mind and express your religious views. A bill has been drafted that threatens to divide our communities. The Religious Discrimination Bill will give people a license to discriminate. The first thing we need to understand is what discrimination actually means, and that is simply to choose. When you decide what to have for dinner, you are discriminating. When you decide whom you want as husband or wife, you are discriminating. When you choose your clothes in the morning, you are discriminating. It is worth asking the question, why should no one have the right to discriminate for any reason? If an individual wishes to hire or fire based on ethnicity, religion, gender, or anything along those lines, what natural law says we should disallow this? 
how many choices do the Parasite class wish to take from us? When Ian Thorpe complains that this will give people a license to discriminate, he is really saying it will give people their God-given right to choose. This freedom goes directly against the interests of those who rule over us, because they know we would choose what they do not want us to. Thorpe also claims that allowing people to choose would divide us, which is true in a sense, but every good lie has an element of truth, otherwise nobody would believe it. The whole truth is that multiculturalism and the cult of diversity has always been about division. It divides along ethnic grounds, religious grounds, political grounds, lifestyle grounds, and in about every way you can think of. This is all by design. The point is to divide and to rule. Allowing people to discriminate as they wish would only highlight this very real, present and extremely dangerous situation for what it is. An express path to civil conflict and potentially war. Make no mistake, thanks to the treasonous parasite class, this is almost unavoidable at this point. It is just that if people had a license to choose as they wished, the division would be obvious to everyone and utterly undeniable. As such, Australians and all Westerners under the globalist regime might actually try to resolve this problem before it truly got out of hand. The oligarchy can't have that, so they attempt to silence us. The bill would mean we're less protected under the law. It will leave us all vulnerable. Not true. If you are a Christian working for a bigoted anti-Christian organisation who thinks it's okay to sack someone for being a Christian, then you will be much more protected. You cannot have it both ways. Anti-discrimination laws protect everyone or they protect no one. This is typical of the LGPT lobby and the communist NPC left in general. Unless the law makes them overlords over everyone, then somehow in their minds they are the victims. What constitutes discrimination today will be considered okay tomorrow. It will take away your rights at work, at school and in hospitals when people say offensive things. Tell us Benjamin, does that include offensive things like, quote, Sometimes I find myself wondering if I'd hate all the anti-gay MPs in Parliament if it meant they got the homophobia out of their system, end quote. In his mind, it is totally fine when he says horrible and offensive things, but if you dare step out of line, he wants to inflict state violence on you. He wants all the freedom in the world to insult and belittle Christians for our faith, but if we dare say your butthole is only for pooing, well, that is hate speech. Things like, my waiter telling me that my relationship is an abomination in God's eyes. Here we get to the point of this cringeworthy piece of cringe, which is to silence any criticism of their sin and stop people calling out homosexuality for the sin that it is. They do not want you to criticise their life choices because their life choices are their identity. Homosexual relationships are falling short in the eyes of God. They are a theft of parental investment, thus a property violation and an affront to nature. God made men and women in order for us to join in marriage and become a single soul. It is a recurring theme throughout the Bible in fact, a core part of the Christian religion you might say. God repeatedly warns against homosexuality and destroys entire cities for engaging in widespread degeneracy, among other things. We can only assume that when the video calls Steph a queer person of faith, they actually mean faith other than Christianity, because God is very clear on the matter, or she should stop complaining when people remind her of this fact. My support worker telling me that disability is caused by the devil. Oh no, not the devil. Not the demonic spirit that causes all evil in the world. How could she possibly say that? The sheer horror of it all. It's not okay for a manager to tell us that we are oppressed by our faith because we are women. Yeah, bigots. Stop saying that Islam oppresses the whamans, okay? Islam says women are worth at least half a man. How good is that? 
Not oppressed at all. Women also have to have sex with their husbands whether they want to or not. Because feminism, baby. You even get to share your husband with up to three other women. What a deal. Islam does not oppress the women's. Patriarchy does. Just ask Moaning Mona. Because it's 2015. Once again, Equality Australia essentially demands that we hide the truth because, let's face it, the truth hurts and they do not want you to hear it. It's not okay for my nurse to tell me that HIV is a punishment from God. Okay, we won't then. And we won't say it is a punishment for living a degenerate lifestyle or a punishment for engaging in stupidly dangerous activity or simply the consequences of your own actions. We will not say that because that would be bigoted and offensive and nobody wants to be bigoted or offensive. Derp derp. It's not okay for a teacher to tell either of my daughters that my ex-wife and I are still married in God's eyes. The most basic of Christian doctrines are off limits now apparently. They want state violence to shut you up for good. Someone should teach the fools exactly what Christianity teaches because they may not understand what bees nest they are trying to kick over. This bill will divide our communities. It will take us backwards. It will affect us all. They say this as if it's a bad thing. The truth is we do need to divide back into our ethnic religious groups, go back to a time when God and tradition ruled and everyone should do this. What they leave out of this piece of propaganda is the fact that the whole goal of cultural Marxism and the cult of diversity that they worship is to divide us. They separate us by race, religion, sexuality, age and all manner of traits for this specific purpose. This very propaganda piece is literally calling for the law to silence genuine religious beliefs through force. All because words might hurt homo feelings. They could not be more divisive if they tried. And as is common with low-grade propaganda of this nature, they leave the real manipulation to the end. Our laws should protect all of us equally. 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 How dare you! And this bill threatens that. We need your voice. Whenever someone uses the term equality or social equality or the law should treat us equally, you know you are dealing with a lying sophist and propagandist. These people do not want equality before the law. They want to impose their choices upon the world and they want the law to force you into silence. Equality is the last thing they want. What they truly desire is power over you. What we need to demand is reciprocity in all things. And what the LGBT liars want is to impose a cost upon you that violates reciprocity. They have no interest in your rights or your property. They think only of themselves and their own desire to prevent hurty feelings. They want to force their will upon you to steal your ability to speak truthfully or to spread the word of God and they offer nothing in return but a patronizing smile. When Australia debated whether to allow fake marriage, the entire media, academic, political and corporate establishment pushed as hard as they could for it. The Yes campaign spread lies about emotional distress while they slandered, defamed and physically assaulted those on the no side. The vote was not secure either and there were widespread reports of tampering and fraud. The Yes campaign swore up and down it was merely a vote for equality and for respect, love is love after all, and that all reasonable counter-arguments were simply fear-mongering and bigotry. Those counter-arguments included, but were not limited to, the stifling of free speech, the escalation of transgender lies and propaganda, and the continued sexualization of our children. These warnings have all come true. And marriage law became obsolete the moment it treated gay couples the same as natural ones anyway. Now LGBT activists use champion athletes to demand the law shut down all criticism of their lifestyle choices, exactly what the No campaign warned would happen. The final argument on this particular video goes to the editor of XYZ, David Hiscox, who said, quote, the parasitic elites in this ad complain that the proposed bill will divide us, yet that is precisely what cultural Marxists have been doing to us for a century. Diversity means division. 
the imprisonment of anybody opposed to the Globo Homo agenda isn't even close to where this is all headed. As was demonstrated in the decision against David Lionhelm, judges already believe it is within their power to read the mind of a defendant to discern whether their statements are prejudiced by unconscious bias. This is headed in the direction of mass imprisonment, mass murder of Christians and state mandated homosexuality, followed by a very brutal war. The irony of all this is that I don't actually support a religious discrimination bill either. We have too many laws already infringing on our liberty, most of which should go. In the current politically correct climate, with our treacherous judicial system, its adoption would merely be hijacked by the followers of foreign religions to further restrict our freedom. End quote. Indeed, David. Indeed. Now, try turn up to our live streams on time. I hope you enjoyed the video, share the truth around, and I'll see ya when I see ya.